Hypixel Skyblock 0.20.8 has released. This includes Pest Hunter's Wares and Chocolate Factory Editions. Anyways, let's see what the update has in store. So if we go over to a Philip in the garden for the Pest Hunter's Wares update, we can speak to them and look at the Pest Hunter's Wares. And you can see there are a lot more items in here now. They used to just be the three accessories. Now we have a biohazard suit, which is an upgrade to the mushroom armor. This grants you more pets chance, which is also a tripled at night while in the garden. That does mean the mushroom suit also only works in the garden. So it's kind of bad for bingo players now. I mean, I never used it when I play bingo, but I heard it's bad. But anyway, this is quite a nice little bonus if you like pest farming. So yeah, you might as well go ahead and use this, put all of the enchants and stuff you can on it. We then have the pest hunter's gloves, which give you a bonus plus 5% pest chance. And also decreases the spawn cooldown of pests by 1%. That costs 40 pests. Oh yeah, and the armor costs 50, 80, 70, 40, depending on how many materials are used to like craft them. So like 4 for the boots, 8 for the chest plate. Yeah. Anyway, we then have a pest trap. So you place this in your garden plot, anywhere on the garden plot, whatever one you want. And um, you fill it then with bait, depending on what like pests you want to try and get. And while you're offline, pests go in there. And the trap basically traps pests, so you can get extra pests in there. So normally you can get max of 8 when offline. This one has a capacity of 2, so you'll get 10 max while offline. There is an upgrade, which does cost the normal pest trap and 75 more pests. You can store 3, and field mice, which is a new type of pest, are 3 times more likely to be caught in this type of trap. Anyway, I do have this, so if I go to my warp garden over here, I placed it down here. As you can see, we have one pest in the trap. If I click on it, I have honey jars in there, so I will try and get moths and crickets. I did, in fact, get a cricket, so you can store up to three in this one, two in the other, and you click to release it, and as you can see, the pest spawns in, and then you can just go up to it and do that, just like the normal pest. And as you can see, you can use this over and over again. If I pick it up and place it back down, as you can see, you can have three placed on your island anywhere you want. Heading back over to Philip for the last couple of more items. We have a beginner's guide to pest hunting. So this costs 500 pests and it increases your pest terminator enchant from level 5 to level 6. You do need it being level 5. I do not have any so I cannot put on an item. But yeah, so you gain in one extra level which is pretty nice. They also by the looks of it, change this enchant. Anyway, we then have the Pest Hunter's Lair Barn Skin. It's a pretty mid barn skin in my opinion. Obviously, it costs 1.5 thousand pests. I have 908 in my vacuum. I'm not going to be buying that for quite a long while. Anyway, the last item, or the last pet, is the Hedgehog Pet. So, of course, it's a farming pet. And it can deal 100% more damage to pests at level 100, grants 100 farming fortune on pests, and grants plus 45 farming fortune, which is indeed tripled at night time. So kind of like the biohazard suit and the mushroom stuff, which is tripled at night. So I have brought that. Mine is currently level 32. As you can see, I deal 32% more damage to pests, and I get plus 32 farming fortune on them and 14.4 farming fortune, which is then tripled at night. So pretty, pretty cool pet for uh, pest farming, to be honest with you. Okay, so talking about the new pest, the field mouse. The field mouse is a special type of pet that can only be caught in traps. And it is quite rare as you only have a 2.4% chance of it spawning in a pest trap and a 7% chance of it appearing in a mouse trap. So if you remember over here, we have pest trap and mouse trap. So you are going to probably be wanting to buy this as the field mouse does have some nice rewards. Also, you can get increased chances to find this pest by reaching Enderman Slayer level nine, as it does have a perk for elusive mobs. Anyway, this mob drops two unique drops, such as the squash toy, which is the first equipment reforged to grant both farming fortune and a bonus pest chance. We then have the squeaky mouse mat, which is a utility item that allows you to input your desired pitch and your, and then snap to them at a click of the button. So if you look down here, in the bottom right, almost, of my screen, if I warp to the garden, I have my, like, your set to 90. Normally the pitch is, like, well, pitch doesn't really matter, like, as long as you can reach all of the, uh, the crops in front of you. But, yeah, basically, you use an item, you left click it, you set like your your to 90.0 and your pitch to say like 3.0 and you can just click that item and it automatically puts you like looking in that direction so no need to like zoom in and like 
make sure you don't miss like the 0, 0.0 mark. It's it's so nice. It's very useful. They've also made some changes to wheat. So if I type slash recipe wheat, you can see we now have enchanted wheat, which costs you this. So normally you would have to make a hay bale and then enchanted hay bales. But now you just use wheat to make enchanted wheat and then enchanted hay bales. That does mean they got rid of the tightly tied hay bales and you can type slash legacy trades to view the old things which it might be pretty cool to keep some of the items to be honest like the tightly tied hay bale and the old enchanted hay bale as you can see the old one was uncommon and the new one is rare anyway they did loads of changes with pest drop balancing as well i'm not going to go through this because there's a lot there but i would leave the form post in the description so you can have a read if you would like to they also did some other small changes such as they swapped the clip rings we forge stone from granting speed to instead granting farm and fortune so it's a bit more useful now they also increased the npc sell price of cactus from a three to four the dung dies drop chance now scales with farm and fortune instead of magic find as it is found on the garden they've also adjusted some sale prices of mysterious crops pest finals trepid stereos and a lot of other pest drop items to actually make them worth set them to the npc instead of selling them for like one coin they actually sell for like a little bit of coins now which is pretty nice same with the epic and legendary slug pet the epic used to sell for 2k now 500k and the legendary used to be 5k and now sells for 5 million and for every 100 bonus pest chance you have one more pest can be in your garden before you start to lose fortune so you better turn on your pest chance because you can get more pests in the long run before being at a disadvantage. Also, a pretty nice change if we go into the agronomy sack. As you can see, they have added jack o' lanterns, so now you can stock up and accept visitors a bit quicker. The pest hunter accessory line is no longer soulbound. This is what you buy from Philip. There is also a new auto pet rule for speaking to a visitor. They've also increased the pest spawn chance from 0.1 to 0.2%. Moving on to Hoppity, so what have they changed with the chocolate factory? Well, let's have a look. They have added a rabbit hitman. As you can see right here, hire this private rabbit to hunt eggs for you. They will collect eggs that you miss. So whenever Hoppity is around, say you missed one egg just because you were like AFK or something. As long as you have purchased the slot in here, the egg will be here. You can stop to 28. This does cost a lot of money, like a lot, a lot of money. It's crazy. I think this one's like 32 mil, 28 mil. I don't know what it is in total, but it's really expensive. But I, I did it yeah Urgh. along with that they have added two new shop items such as the choco rabbit minion skin which just changes the appearance of a minion to a chocolate rabbit this costs 2.5 billion chocolate we then have the hot chocolate mixin which grants you plus 15 pet luck and a 0 0.05 times chocolate per second lasts for 72 hours and costs you 1.5 billion chocolate the only reason it lasts 72 hours for me is just because my alchemy level is max the default is 36 hours though and Thinking about it, I'm assuming this also increases with the parrot pet. They've also added a new feature called Rabbit Hotspot. So as you can see here, this says rabbit locations when inside the Hoppity's collection. Each spring, most rabbits hop to another island just for fun. The hotspot of a rabbit means that this season they have a 50% higher chance to be found on this island. Resident rabbits, however, can only be found on their respective islands. Currently selected all rabbits. Let's see what you can do. Crimson Isle, none on there, none on Dungeon Hub. I'm guessing as it is not spring right now, Hoppity's Hunt isn't active, so I cannot view. But anyway, resident rabbits. So that actually just seemed like they've added quite a decent amount of new rabbits, which is pretty cool. So such as Morty, this can only be found in the Dungeon Hub. Potato can only be found on the Farming Island. Jacqueline can only be found on the park, etc, etc. It goes on for quite a lot of things, which is pretty cool. There is no legendary or above rabbits from this, but this is a pretty nice way of adding new rabbits, to be honest. I can't wait to be able to earn divines a bit easier because they might be, they might have a hotspot on a different island. So you'd go there and open up eggs there. This does require you to actually be on the island though. So you can't just use like the rabbit hitman to collect him and switch to that island and so on and so on. They've also done some other changes such as they have buffed the rabbit shrine from one to 2% chance to find a new rabbit per level. They've also buffed the chocolate accessory line from given one to plus 2% chance to find a new rabbit per tier. Also chocolate eggs that appear during the hunt will actually persist for another whole skyblock day, meaning there will be six eggs at a time on a skyblock island. So it gives you a bit more time just in case you miss any. They've added two new achievement rabbits, which basically just require you to have a certain requirement, such as Morty, find 15 different eggs in the dungeon hub, and Carrot, defeat the Carrot King sea creature. 
Stray rabbits are now guaranteed to spawn within the first 30 seconds of opening a chocolate egg. Chocolate dye now costs 40 billion coins instead of 4 billion. And you can now purchase one instead of four per skyblock year. That is basically everything with this update. We were going to have some Crimson Isle changes rolled out, but they have decided to delay that as the changes are not fully ready and they need to adjust some things before it will release. So we'll hopefully get that very soon. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.